Whenever you enter Hall H, expect the unexpected. You need to remind me, where did I leave my bag? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for another top 10 Comic-Con surprises of all time. For this list, we're taking a look at more surprises, twists, and reveals from the definitive entertainment and comic convention. Number 10, Joker's Wild. The same year attendees were treated to a first look at Jared Leto's Joker in the Suicide Squad trailer, another clown prince of crime crashed Comic-Con. Sure, that's absurd and, and offensive. But it's the truth. At the panel for Fox's Gotham, the cast discussed what to expect in season two with the rise of the villains. As one fan started to ask a question, the microphone was suddenly swiped by someone else in the crowd. It was none other than actor Cameron Monaghan, who appeared in season one as Jerome Valeska, a villain who sent off some serious Joker vibes. In true Joker fashion, Monaghan caught everyone off guard, asking Ben McKenzie about his tolerance for pain. The Detective Gordon actor vowed to find Jerome as Monaghan was carted off by security. I'm a huge fan of the show. I just wanted to start off by saying... Oh, I question. Oh, no! Oh. Do we have I'm security? I'm a big fan of your work. Oh. Hey, how high is your pain tolerance? Whoa! I'm gonna find you! Number nine, Marvel returns to Hall H. Now I could spend 90 minutes talking about what we've done. Or I could spend some time talking about what we're about to do. After sitting out SDCC the previous year, Marvel returned with a vengeance in 2019, laying out almost the entirety of phase four in a jam-packed Hall H appearance. Hello. Between sequels for characters like Doctor Strange and Thor, and new additions like Shang-Chi and the Eternals, the panel was so full of info that fan favorites like Black Panther, Captain Marvel, and even the Fantastic Four took a backseat to Black Widow's upcoming movie, as well as a slew of Disney Plus shows. Oh, and by the way, Mahershala Ali is gonna play Blade, and if it seems like we're trying to cram that into this entry, it's because that's how we felt when Feige and Co. dropped that juicy detail at the very end of the panel. Uh, Mahershala, it, it looks like it looks like you brought your own hat, Mahershala. You did? What is that? <laughs> Number eight, Joss Whedon and J.J. Abrams, together at last. Joss Whedon and J.J. Abrams have helmed some of the biggest franchises in the history of fandom, making them Comic-Con royalty. We, we met at the parties, we think. We don't remember very well. Um, but we know each other. Yeah. And, and then we've never met. You can imagine everyone's excitement when these visionaries took to the stage together at 2010 Comic-Con, leading some to believe that they might be teaming up on a project. While that sadly wasn't the case, both filmmakers had huge individual announcements for the crowd. Whedon confirmed once and for all that he was directing Marvel's The Avengers, as many had hoped and predicted. Abrams, meanwhile, discussed several projects he had lined up, including his upcoming collaboration with Steven Spielberg, Super 8. While the panel was full of fun teases, the real treat was listening to these two discuss filmmaking, storytelling, and everything nerdy. I sent letters to like Dick Smith and Tom Savini, and Dick Smith, like The Exorcist, and, and he's one of, the, one of the greats, and he sent me uh, the tongue from The Exorcist. Nice. And about, I was like 14. Number seven, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World premiere. Great story, man. Although the film was unfortunately a box office bomb, bomb fans knew that Edgar Wright's adaptation of Brian Lee O'Malley's graphic novels were destined for cult status following its explosive debut at Comic-Con. After a panel where star Michael Cera donned Captain America garb, Wright invited several fans who had been given one-up buttons to attend a premiere screening of the film. Those lucky audience members got to follow Wright directly from the panel to the theater where the secret screening took place. Not only was this a one in a lifetime opportunity, but it also demonstrated why Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was truly a movie that had been made for fans. As a bonus, the screening came complete with a live performance from Metric. Who would like to see another clip from the film? Or would you rather see the entire movie right now? Number six, a new doctor in the house. When Peter Capaldi's tenure as Doctor Who wrapped up in 2017, fans were surprised to learn that the sonic screwdriver would pass to Jodie Whittaker, making her the character's first female incarnation. Right! 
This is gonna be fun. In addition to a new Doctor, the upcoming series of Doctor Who also promised new companions and a new showrunner. Whovians were given a taste of what to expect going forward when the cast made their first public appearance together at Comic-Con 2018. Up until this point, the most we had seen of Whitaker's Doctor was her brief appearance at the end of Twice Upon a Time. Between her adorkable arrival at Hall H and the ensuing panel, Whitaker quickly won over the audience before they had even seen Series 11. Can you tell me how to get to Comic-Con? Oh, I'm looking for Hall H. Oh, brilliant, thank you. Number five, Henry Cavill's Vendetta against Will Smith. Here we go, gonna head onto the floor and see if I can get away with it. Wish me luck. It's always cool when a celebrity goes undercover at Comic-Con, seamlessly blending into the crowd by wearing a mask. At Comic-Con 2016, Henry Cavill exchanged his Man of Steel suit for a Guy Fox mask, or a V for Vendetta mask as DC fans might call it. As far as disguises go, this was only a minor upgrade from Clark Kent's glasses. Nevertheless, Soup still managed to throw everyone for a loop, especially Will Smith. Signing autographs at a Suicide Squad booth, Smith was completely oblivious as Cavill approached. It wasn't until after Smith posed for a photo with an unmasked Cavill that he realized Superman was in his presence. Come on! Surprising the fans is one thing, but fooling a fellow DCEU actor is quite another. Number four, Rick and Morty radio show. Oh my god, Grandpa Rick, it's like not my job where you're back at. Waiting in between seasons of Rick and Morty is never easy, but at Comic Con 2018, creators Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon gave a small group of fans something to tide them over. Along with voice actress Cassie Steele, Roiland and Harmon turned the Rick and Morty Live soundtrack panel into a fake radio show. The show was given several names, including Floop and Noop and Bloop's show, and Snoopy Gloopo Asks the Scoops. As you might have guessed from those titles, this panel wasn't scripted and plenty of alcohol was involved. The people in attendance were supplied with headphones as Roiland injected songs and sound effects. The panel proved to be one of that year's best-kept Comic-Con secrets and an insanely hilarious experience for everyone involved. Whoa, 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 whoa. Number 3, Rally for Rose. Whether you loved or hated Star Wars The Last Jedi, the backlash against the film officially reached toxic territory when actress Kelly Marie Tran was bullied into deleting her Instagram account. This decision followed months of online harassment that Tran had endured from the ugly underbelly of fandom in response to her portrayal of Rose Tico. It's too late, don't do this! No! I won't let them win! Fortunately, the nerds of color organized the rally for Rose at Comic-Con 2018 to show that the fandom would not be swayed to the dark side. Some were dressed as Rose, while others sported t-shirts featuring the character's name and likeness in the style of Barack Obama's iconic Hope poster. The surprise rally even caught the attention of Mark Hamill, who helped spread word of this rebellion against trolls. Number 2. 2007 Dark Knight Viral Marketing Campaign Few movies have generated more hype than The Dark Knight, and that can be largely attributed to its brilliant viral marketing campaign. Fair enough. Leading up to the film's release, 42 Entertainment made fans part of the experience through an alternate reality game. Comic-Con 2007's best in-joke came in the form of US dollar bills, featuring George Washington wearing Joker makeup and the words one dollar replaced by why so serious. The bill sent fans on a scavenger hunt to whysoserious.com, where they were able to view a vandalized Uncle Sam poster and a teaser for The Dark Knight. It's not about money, it's about sending a message. And this message had our anticipation at an all-time high. It's not about money, it's about sending a message. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey, the only convention that celebrates all things Pacey Witter and Dawson's Creek in the entire country. And this year, it's gonna be better than ever. So let's get out there and meet some Pacey fans! Yeah! This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world premiere. I have been through a whole lot. Trial tribulation, but I know God. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there though, just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Alright, back to business. Number 1. Michael Keaton is Batman. What are you? 
I'm Batman. Every time a new actor is cast as Batman, Warner Brothers and DC can expect a load of hate mail. This trend began when Michael Keaton landed the titular role in Tim Burton's 1989 film, much to the dismay of comic book readers who couldn't see Beetlejuice playing the Dark Knight. What are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. A couple of months after a negative fan reaction at a Chicago comic convention in 1988, Batman co-creator Bob Kane dropped by San Diego Comic-Con, where he praised Keaton's casting. Kane also answered questions and shared stills from the film. After the man behind the bat gave his seal of approval, more fans decided to give Keaton a chance. Once Batman premiered the following summer, the naysayers completely forgot what they'd been complaining about. Now what do you think? You think I'm qualified? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.